I am really excited for today's video. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to install real-time local AI drawing on your computer at home. Of course, with this being local, it's entirely private and completely free, and even if you're a beginner, I feel very confident that I'm going to be able to teach you guys how to install this today. I've made everything as simple as possible, and I'm really proud of how everything came out. I'm also really happy to say that Gigabyte sponsored today's video. While everything might look like a normal MatVid Pro video, video, under the hood, everything today is running on their monstrous 17x Aorus laptop. This thing packs a whopping RTX 4080 graphics card, and I am honestly astounded by how well the real-time drawing works with this machine. Not only is this laptop fast enough to run local AI, it's fast enough to actually replace my entire regular computer setup, video recording and all. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into this. All right, everybody, so here we are on my Windows desktop running on my laptop. The first thing that we're gonna do here is check and see if we actually can run the local real-time drawing AI that we're going to be installing. A few notes, this does work on Mac and Windows and Linux machines. However, this tutorial is particularly for Windows machines, and while this video still might be a great guide for installing it on Linux or Mac, you might need to do a few extra steps that aren't covered in today's Today's video to get it working on those machines, but every resource is still linked down in the description below. So on Windows, we're going to go ahead and check if we have good enough hardware to run this local AI. We're going to do this by holding down the Windows key and then pressing X. It's going to bring up this little tab here. We're going to want to click on Task Manager. Once we click on that, a little window is going to pop up. Now, depending on whether or not you're on Windows 11 or 10, these little icons are either going to be on the left-hand side or they're going to be up towards the top. What we are going to be looking for is the Performance tab. Click on that Performance tab and you'll be brought to this screen right here. So in here, what we're particularly going to be interested in is the GPU section. Now, you're probably only going to see one GPU. I have two because my CPU comes with its own little integrated GPU. Not going to be concerned with that today. I'm more concerned with the integrated RTX 4080 that's going to be powering our AI. So go ahead and click on your GPU. It's either going to say Intel, NVIDIA, or AMD. In today's tutorial, we're specifically focusing on NVIDIA GPUs, but that doesn't mean that things can't run well on AMD GPUs or Intel GPUs. You may run into issues that I'm not going to experience today, but that doesn't mean it's not possible to run this on an AMD or Intel GPU. Now to verify that our GPU is good to go today, we're going to scroll down here and check for dedicated GPU memory right over here. There's also shared GPU memory, but we're going to ignore that. If you don't have any dedicated GPU memory, for instance, my little Intel UHD graphics over here only has shared, unfortunately today's tutorial won't work out for you. But if you have dedicated GPU memory and you have at least a gigabytes, things should run very well today. You might be able to get away with this number only being 4 gigabytes, but I think that it will be a little bit slower than real time. 8 gigabytes seems to be the bare minimum to run this real time AI in a reasonable manner. This Aorus 17X with its whopping 4080 graphics card has a nice 12 gigabytes of dedicated GPU memory, so that's more than enough to run our local AI today. Now that we know we're good to go, let's go ahead and close our task manager. Alright, our next step here is going to be clicking the first link in the description labeled 7-Zip. You don't technically need 7-Zip to do what we're doing today, however 7-Zip will make unpacking a lot of the files we use today a lot faster. It's great free software and honestly if you have a computer, it's definitely worth it to keep 7-Zip around. We're going to want to go ahead and download the 64-bit Windows, just click the download link and it will automatically download. Open up our downloads folder because we're going to be using it a lot today, so we might as well keep Keep it open and we're going to double click our 7-zip installer. You won't be able to see this part, but it's asking to make changes to our device. We're just going to want to go ahead and click the yes to install 7-zip. Go ahead and click the install button and really quickly we'll have 7-zip installed. Now the next thing that we're going to want to go ahead and do is click the second link in the description labeled SDXL Turbo Download. It's going to take us to this website right here and everything might look a little complex and scary at first, but we're going to want to scroll all the way down to the end of the page, SDXL Turbo 1.0.Safe Tensors. And we're going to want to go ahead and click this little download icon next to this red LFS box. Once we click that, it's going to automatically start our SDXL Turbo download. This is a pretty big download, 14 gigabytes in fact. So you might want to check and see if you have extra space to download this before you begin it. 
But yeah, the reason we're starting this download right now is because it might take a while, depending on your internet speed. While that's running, we're going to go ahead and start another download. This is going to be the third link in the description labeled Upscale Models. While these aren't entirely necessary for installing our real-time drawing, it does allow us to upscale our drawings to a nicer quality. This is on Google Drive, and I don't operate this Google Drive link, so I can't promise it'll be around forever, but just go ahead and click the blue download button to begin this download. It might prompt you with this little warning, don't worry, everything is safe, you can click download anyways. Now you're going to want to move on to your fourth link, and this is going to be for Comfy UI. Now, Comfy UI is the user interface that we're going to be interacting with when using our real-time drawing AI. This link will take you immediately to the Windows download for this. Now, if you're on a Mac or a Linux device, this is going to be your page to find all the information that you might need for installing this. Like I said, I'm really focusing on Windows today, but this is going to be a great starting point if you're using a Mac or Linux device. So under Windows here, we're going to want to click direct link to download. Once we click this, it's going to immediately start our comfy UI download. Again, that's another pretty big file, 1.4 gigabytes, so it might take some time. Now, next up, we're going to want to go ahead and install Git. I know it's a lot of installing stuff, but bear with me. This is another one of those softwares that's just going to make things a little bit easier for us today. I've put a lot of time into trying to make this as easy and simple as possible for you guys. We're going to want to get the standalone installer 64-bit Git for Windows setup. Once we click that, again, it's just going to start our download right over here. This one's going to be pretty quick, so we'll go right to our downloads and double click it to install it immediately. Again, it's going to come up with that yes or no prompt. You're going to want to click yes on that and then it'll bring up this little installer. I'm going to go ahead and just click next on all of this stuff. Don't worry, it's not going to install anything extra. And once I am done clicking next on everything, it's going to install Git. And once it finishes, we can unclick the view release notes and click the finish button. Now Git's installed. And once we're done that, we're going to want to go ahead and click the sixth link down in the description below labeled Comfy UI Manager. Now we have to install Comfy UI Manager. That's the reason we needed to install Git. In the long run, Comfy UI Manager is going to make it a lot easier to set up our final drawing interface. As you can see, it takes you right to the install instructions for Comfy UI Manager. We already did step one, install Git. So we're going to move to step two, download this little script. Once you click that, it's going to take you to this slightly confusing little piece of text. What we're going to want to do is highlight all of this text, make sure you got all of it, and copy it. You can either do that by right-clicking or just holding Control and pressing C. I'll also have this little piece of code written out in the description below for ease of use for you guys, but we're going to want to go ahead and copy that. Now, for the rest of the tutorial, you're going to want to make sure you have everything downloaded. So if you have any more downloads that are still waiting, such as the SDXL Turbo Safe Tensors file, you're going to want to let that finish up before continuing further. All right, so once all your downloads have completed, you can go ahead and minimize your web browser for the time being and just focus on your downloads. So our first concern here is going to be this Comfy UI. We're going to right click it. We want to open this with 7-Zip. So what we're going to do is go to open with, then go to choose another app. You might see 7-Zip in here. In my case, I actually don't. So what I'm going to have to do is click choose an app on your PC. We're going to click Windows. Then we're going to click on Program Files and then 7-Zip. The first file with an icon in here, 7ZFM, is the one that we're going to click and then click on open. As you can see, 7-Zip File Manager now appears in our More Options tab. Kind of tricky to get 7-Zip in here. I wish there was a better way for Windows to set this up, but this is just how we have to do it. And then we'll click Always. So now that file will always open up with 7-Zip. As you can see, when we open that up, we actually see another folder inside of 7-Zip called Comfy UI. Now what we're going to want to do is drag this file to wherever we want our Comfy UI to be. Keep in mind, this is the folder you're going to open every single time you want to run your local drawing AI. In my case, it's just going to be my desktop, so I'm going to go ahead and drag it to my desktop. Now, this is the reason that we installed 7-Zip. It is a lot faster to do this with 7-Zip than Windows' own default program. It's extracting all of our files for us. Keep in mind, when we actually extract this file, it's actually going to be a little bit bigger than when we first download it, so you want to make sure that you have enough space on your computer. All right, so now that we've extracted our Comfy UI to our location, we can go ahead and close 7-Zip. Now, keeping our downloads folder open, we're going to go ahead and double click that Comfy UI window and open it up. 
As you can see, there's a few options in here, run NVIDIA GPU, run CPU, and then we have some folders, Comfy UI being the main one. Now remember that text I told you to copy and paste from that website or my description? That's going to come into play now. What we are going to want to do is right click inside of this folder, click on new, and then we're going to click on text document. You can name this literally anything you want. I'm just going to name it subscribe. We're going to double click on this to edit. Now, once that folder is open, we're literally just going to paste that text right in. Again, you can do that by holding control and then pressing V or right clicking and going to paste. Now, after that, we're going to go to file and then we're going to save as we're going to click save as and under file name here, we're going to name it subscribe.ba. T. Now you can name it anything, but it has to end in .bat or it won't work. You're then going to want to click on save and you'll actually see that original file, but a brand new file that has some little gear icons next to it by the same name. Now what we're going to do is double click that brand new file with the little gears next to it. It's going to open up this little window. You're going to see some things start to happen. Essentially, it's installing the Comfy UI manager for us and it will automatically close once it's finished. After that, you can go ahead and delete these files. We no longer need them. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is go into Comfy UI. We're going to want to scroll down until we see the models folder section. We're going to double click in there. Now you're going to see this checkpoint folder. Double click into the checkpoints folder, find your SDXL turbo file, that big one we downloaded, and drag it right into the checkpoints folder. We're then going to move it back into the models folder, scroll down until we see upscale models. We're going to go find the upscale models file that we downloaded. It should be a 7-zip file now. And if you followed my instructions exactly, you should be able to just double click it to open up into 7-zip. But just for the sake of people who might not have followed it precisely, we're going to right click it, go down to open with, choose another app, and then find 7-zip file manager just the same and click always. There's a bunch of different upscalers that we can try and use out today. We're going to go ahead and double click into the upscale models folder. We're going to select and drag all of these files and put them right into that upscalers folder. It's going to pop up with this message. Just press skip file. So we can now close out of 7-zip again. All right, now you're going to want to go ahead and click the final link down in the description below, which will take you to my custom workflow for Comfy UI real-time drawing. This is very important and you won't be able to do the real-time drawing without my custom workflow. As you can see, this is a Google Drive file. You're going to want to go up to the top right hand corner and click on downloads. It'll go ahead and download. That's going to be a really quick download. You can now go ahead and minimize your browser once more. You're going to want to make sure you're in the very beginning of your Comfy UI folder. You'll see something called Run NVIDIA GPU. Very important that you want to make sure you click the one that says NVIDIA GPU and not the one that says Run CPU. If you have an AMD GPU, an Intel GPU, or you're on Mac or Linux, things are going to be a little bit different for you. You're going to have to follow some separate instructions, but this still might be a great guide. Like I said, just double click Run NVIDIA GPU and it's going to open up this little command prompt. It might take a few minutes to load up, but eventually it's actually going to open a new browser window and you're going to see something exactly like this in your new browser tab. You'll also see this little manager button and share directly under it. This is going to indicate that we have correctly installed Comfy UI Manager, which is very crucial for all of this. Now, the next thing that we want to do is go ahead in this side tab to the right and click on load. It's going to open up a little file browser. We're going to want to go ahead and navigate to our downloads. And there you're going to want to click on that file that we just downloaded, that last one called Matvid Pro Real Time Drawing Final.json. Click on that, click on open. It's going to say, when loading the graph, the following no types were not found. This is an error, sure, but don't worry, everything is fine. This is as intended, but you should see efficient loader and canvas tab were not found. Just click on close, then go and click on manager. And once you click on manager, it's going to bring up the comfy UI manager menu. You want to go down and click on install missing custom nodes. This is automatically going to install the nodes that are necessary to run my custom workflow. This is why we went through all the trouble of installing Comfy UI Manager. So we could click this button and have everything installed automatically. It's going to take us right to the two nodes that we need. You're going to want to click install. You can only install one at a time and you'll see it actually indicates whether or not it is done installing right here in the bottom left hand corner. And if you go back to that little command, you can see it's actually working in the background to install stuff. As you can see, we installed that first one. Now we're going to want to move on to the second one called canvas tab. You'll note it gave us a warning that we need to restart once both of these are installed. Just click that restart button and then click OK. 
OK. It's going to automatically restart ComfyUI for you and open up a brand new tab. Now you should have no errors at all. And this is how things should look. Everything should be set up for you automatically here. Again, this is my custom workflow that I have created, so I'm going to teach you how to use it. Everything that's to the left of the efficient loader here, you can by and large ignore. I've got that all set up for you. You can zoom in using the mouse cursor to get close to stuff. It's going to be helpful when you're actually doing your side by side drawing. By the way, any extra tabs, you can go ahead and close out right here. It's pretty obvious. This is where your prompt is going to be. And this is where your negative prompt is going to be everything you don't want to see. Click on checkpoint name up here and then click on SDXL Turbo 1.0 safe tensors. This will ensure that you're using the SDXL Turbo model that I installed. Now you shouldn't have to do this, but just in case I'm warning you about that. Now, if we want to go ahead and queue up this first prompt we have right here, photo of a tabby cat. All we have to do is go up to the corner and press Q prompt. It's then going to load up this model, which might take some time at first. But once the model is loaded, your generation should be pretty rapid. If you want to track the progress of loading the model, you can see it right here in the command line. As you can see, it already generated our prompt right there. Now, if I press Q prompt again, nothing is going to happen because I actually haven't changed anything. Here's where the magic begins. Click on extra options right under Q prompt. Make sure your batch count is set to one and then click auto queue. Then click Q prompt again. And now your prompts are auto queuing. This is where real time begins. By the way, your little preview image here, it's going to be this warped colored thing until you actually start doing the drawing. Don't worry, we're getting to the real time drawing. You can actually change prompts in real time. So if I want to change this cat to a dog, I can simply delete cat and write dog in. It's then going to go ahead and in real time generate a tabby dog. Apparently, if we go ahead and delete tabby because there's no such thing as a tabby dog, it will actually create a nice dog for us. But yeah, all of this happening in pretty much real time. You can edit the prompt in real time as well as the drawing. As you see, if I change things to cartoon, it will immediately change it to cartoon. If I change it to, I don't know, pixel art, it's going to go ahead and convert that image to pixel art. So yeah, real time prompt editing here. So we'll just go ahead and stick with this prompt for now. Now I'm going to get into the drawing in real time. This is where things get amazing. We're going to go ahead and click on the edit right here, which says edit in another tab. It's going to open up a new tab with a drawing. What I like to do is go ahead and drag this tab separately and do two separate windows. So on one side here, I have my drawing and the other side, I have my comfy UI. Now this lower preview image is the one that's going to be from your drawing. It looks all weird and green right now because we don't have a drawing submitted yet. But our prompt here is going to follow what we draw on the side. This is incredible and it's pretty amazing that this is all running in real time locally on your own machine and a laptop nonetheless. So first up, let's go ahead and start our drawing here with some grass. So I'm going to start the grass on the bottom here. Every time you release your drawing pen, by the way, is when the image updates, as you can see. And now it updates in real time. How cool is that, guys? If I want to make the grass, you know, halfway up, I can do that just by coloring the grass in. And now it moves things halfway up. As you can see, it can also see this white background here and has made quite the white background. Let's say I want that to be a nice blue color. I'm going to go ahead and just color the background blue, just like that, all the way up to the top. And now we'll get a mostly blue background. Now our dog here, let's say I want the dog to be to the left hand side. I can go ahead and just draw that in, draw like a blob to represent the dog. Well, it didn't interpret that as a dog. It actually interpreted that as the trees in the background. If that's the case, we'll go ahead and edit our prompts over here on the side. Remember guys, everything that you draw, you pretty much have to write in your prompt or the AI isn't going to know that you need it there. We'll actually delete trees in the background. We'll say photo of the dog to the left. And we'll see in real time, as you can see, that absolutely worked. It put our dog to the left. So make sure you prompt everything you draw and you should have a pretty great time with this. So I'll go ahead and undo and I'll put the dog back in the sensor for me. So let's go ahead and edit this again. I'm going to say overcast photo is of a orange tabby cat. There we go. We can see the tabby cat right there in the center. But this image is going to interact in real time. So if I start drawing the neck, it's actually going to make him come a little bit closer to fit the needs of this image. If I make everything a lot bigger here, it's going to put the cat right up in the, the camera's face. So we'll back out of this to our original tabby cat. You can kind of morph and change things over time to change the cat's body and the perspective here. You can see how fast it's able to generate and update our images in real time. I mean, it's truly incredible. It's like you've never seen before. 
There's a lot of playing around and messing around that you can do with this. It's a new creative way to experience AI art. I really encourage you to just play around with things, draw random lines like I'm doing right now and see how the image reacts. You might end up with something you really like. You can also see at the same time, we do have our original SDXL rendering. In this case, it's just this photo of a cat. But let's say, you know, oh, I'm really happy and satisfied with this photo right here that we got based off of our scribbles. I'm going to close the drawing out right here and maximize our main window to show you the upscaling. As you can see, these are all grayed out at the bottom. This is by design because we have to disable the auto queue in order to do upscaling. So we disable our auto queue, highlight the first one that says load upscale model, hold the control button and then press M and it will reload that module back in and just do that for all of these control plus M. And there we go. By the way, guys, this is how you actually save your image. Everything that we generated so far, all those individual images, none of those saved anywhere. So we want to load an upscale model. We downloaded a bunch of them. I'm partial to the 4X NMKD Super Scale. Go ahead and click on that one. And then all we have to do is press the Q prompt button. It's now going to cue our upscaler and upscale both our original SDXL and the controlled drawn one. Now you can see if we zoom in, both of these have upscaled pretty nicely, I think, for being local. This one actually came out really good. And yeah, that's how you pretty much do this all locally. Again, if you want to do the real-time drawing again, what you're going to have to do is just control press M on all of these, enable the auto queue once more, click edit to open that back up, and you can continue your real-time drawing as you did before like nothing ever happened. It's really incredible stuff and I'm so happy with the way this turned out. I really suggest you guys mess around with this, see what you can do creatively. Like if we just make this all black, for example, how is it affect our end image. Oh, it turns out that the whole background becomes black. We can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Like let's say, you know, just a blue blob in the middle. Oh, that will kind of affect our overall image and make the lighting feel a lot more blue with our cat. There's a lot of really creative ways you can interact with this. This is AI imaging like you've never seen before, truthfully. I think you guys will have a lot of fun with this. And by the way, guys, when you want to exit out of Comfy UI, just close the window and then close that little command tab. To reopen it, obviously you're going to want to go back to that Comfy UI folder and click that run NVIDIA GPU again. Oh, and one last thing, if you want to find your outputs or your upscaled images, go into your Comfy UI folder, then go into Comfy UI, scroll down until you find output, and these are where all of your saved outputs are going to be. I'm really, really happy with the way everything turned out. I think you guys are going to like this a lot. Let me know if you have any questions at all down in the comments below. And it's really honestly incredible that Gigabyte was able to sponsor today's video. It's a really great tutorial. And this channel absolutely would not exist without its sponsors. If you're interested in learning more about the Aorus 17X laptop, I'll go ahead and link all of that down below for you. This thing is an absolute beast of a laptop and can absolutely replace a full gaming computer for a fairly reasonable price, dare I say. It's got that beefy RTX 4080 GPU, which is no slouch, a 13th gen Intel Core i9-3900HX CPU, a 1440p 240Hz display, all in a portable package. Really impressed with the performance. As you can see, it can run my full usual recording setup, both me talking to you guys and presenting things on camera, as well as running real-time AI generation. Double duty. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.